This is required practical four, which is an investigation into the effect of temperature on the permeability of cell surface membranes of beetroot. Start by cutting two millimeter deep discs of beetroot. And this is a good way for us to see the variability in color across each of the discs, which is of course gonna give us variability in our results depending on where we take our discs of beetroot from. Now using the cork borer, I'm going to remove six pellets and put them inside a boiling tube. And I'm gonna do that for six different boiling tubes. Okay, now I've put those boiling tubes with the six pellets of beetroot to one side. And what I'm doing now is I'm filling up six mils of water into each boiling tube. And I'm then gonna put them at the six different temperatures that I've chosen to use, which are zero degrees, which I'm creating in the bucket of ice, 20 degrees, which is my room temperature, 40 degrees, 60 degrees, 80 degrees, and then I'm gonna try and use a hot plate to get a temperature as close to boiling as possible, and the warmest temperature I can actually get is 85 degrees with that, so I'm gonna plot that point too. When all of those tubes of water are at the desired temperature, I'm then gonna use some tweezers to carefully place my six pellets into each of the boiling tubes with the water in it. And I'm being careful not to over squeeze with the tweezers because I don't want to cause more membrane da damage because that will of course affect my results. As I add them to each tube, I'm taking care to give the tube a good shake because I want to make sure that the maximum surface area is exposed to the water. I don't want any of my pellets stuck together. Set my timer for 10 minutes and after 10 minutes, I work in the same order and I quickly decant my liquid off from the pellets into another boiling tube to stop that leakage. I've got my boiling tubes in order and I'm now going to calibrate the colorimeter. I'm holding the ribbed side of the cuvette uh, to ensure I don't put any fingerprints on the transparent side. I'm pouring distilled water into there. I'm going to place the lid on. I'm gonna open up the cuvette, pop it inside and press calibrate and wait for the data logger to record zero. And that's the only time I need to press the calibrate button. Beyond that, every time I take a sample in the cuvette and put it in, I just close the lid and wait for the data logger to stop fluctuating up and down around a number. I'm going to record my result down and then I'm going to move on to the next one. And of course, just before I place each cuvette in the colorimeter, I'm making sure to give it a wipe to make sure I don't end up with any fingerprints on there and to make sure it's dry. Okay, and as my results are being placed into the table, I can see that the pattern isn't quite what I expect. So I'm quickly going to extend my table and I'm going to do the readings again. However, what I'm going to do between each reading is pop the cuvette with distilled water back in there to ensure that the reading is zero, that my data logger, my colorimeter stays calibrated. Okay, and so to be able to plot my graph, what I want to do is change absorbance into transmittance. It's not a linear relationship, so I need to use the anti-log uh, bracket 2 minus the absorbance close bracket, and that will give me my transmission, which will give me a nice scale to plot it against because it will be percentage transmittance, which means I can then express uh, the leakage as a percentage. Okay, so here's my curve. It's not quite what I expected. I've joined it uh, dot to dot with a ruler because I can't reliably predict the intermediate points. So the reading at zero is a little bit suspicious and that's why I've circled it. I imagine it's an anomaly and it should be the same as perhaps for the temperature at 20 degrees. Between 20 degrees and 60 degrees, as the temperature increases, the transmission decreases, and that means that there is a greater leakage of the pigment into the water. In other words, permeability increases. Between 60 degrees and 85 degrees, there's very little variation in the leakage of pigment from the cell. The permeability 
of the membrane doesn't change very much at all. So in describing the graph, we can comment on three very distinct phases. To explain the graph, we can talk about how, as the temperature increases, the kinetic energy of the molecules in the plasma membrane and the pigment molecules increase. As they increase, there are more opportunities for the pigment to squeeze between the plasma membrane molecules and out into the liquid. And in terms of its practical application, the kind of person this might be of interest to is a manufacturer of perhaps a dye for colouring clothes. If they wanted to find out the best temperature to use to extract the dye, i.e. the pigment, then 60 degrees would be the best temperature to use because any increase in temperature beyond 60 degrees didn't produce a significant difference in the permeability of the membrane. Now, in the worksheet that you used, I've included a column there for actual temperature because, of course, while a water bath may be set at 40 degrees or 60 degrees, the actual temperature of the water in there without the lid on may differ. And in terms of producing our curve, to get the best possible curve, we want to make sure that we, point, we plot the points that we actually have. Now, as always, to improve the reliability of our experiment, we can do repeats. And if our repeats gave us several values that we plotted, and on a graph, the closer they are to the line, the more confident we can be that our results are reliable. If they're further away from the line of best fit, they're more spread out, then we'd be less confident. So how would we explain the result between 60 and 85 degrees, where at 80 degrees it goes a little higher? Well, perhaps the result for 60 and 85 represented some random error. Perhaps we squeezed too hard with the tweezers, more pigment leaked out, and the percentage transmission was slightly less. Additionally, there could have been variation within our beetroot sample. At the beginning, we saw that there were some areas that were more pigmented than others. Human error could have varied the amount of water in each boiling tube. The sample at 80 degrees could have also been decanted a little bit quicker than that at 60 and 85. If it was decanted a little bit quicker, then there was less time for the pigment and therefore a slight increase in the transmission of light through it. But it's important to realise that the difference for the result at 80 degrees is very, very, very little compared to 60 and 85, and I'm just using that result as an example of how you would explain a result that didn't quite fit the pattern. Systematic error that would have run through the whole experiment would be that we don't know how many cells we've actually cut into. The pigment is contained in the vacuole of the plant cell, and clearly we're going to cut through some of those and divide the cells, but equally we're going to cut some right through the cell. We're going to cut through the cell and through the vacuole. So different amounts of pigment will have leaked out just from the cutting process. And perhaps what we could have done was rinsed that so we had the same starting point in each sample. Explaining the graph between 20 degrees and 60 degrees, as the temperature of the water increased, the permeability of the membrane increased. And that is because the molecules, both of the cell membrane and of the pigment, increased in their kinetic energy and as they moved more there was more opportunities for the pigment to escape through the plasma membrane. Now this experiment clearly has its limitations. For instance the pigment is actually contained in the plasma membrane of the vacuole. What we're probably testing is the permeability of the cell membrane. Also the experiment only tests the permeability of one type of molecule i.e. water. It's not tested alcohol or any other molecules. Also, plants have cell walls, so maybe the results represent the leakage through the cell wall. Perhaps the pigment had leaked out of the vacuole, out of the membrane, but it was actually being contained by the cell wall. So there are plenty of limitations within this experiment.